Hello, hello. Double hello. Praise the Lord. Welcome to this Kingdom Age channel. Love from love, hope from hope, peace from peace. Uh, these are the days to celebrate the vision of the Kingdom Age uh, and to examine uh, Habakkuk, his prophecy of the Kingdom Age because these are the days of the beginning of God's glory covering the earth as waters covering the seas, the Bible foretells. So it's time to uh, put away our pettiness and let our perfect love arise over and above all of our uh, selfishness. And it's time that we come to understand that God's word is flowing anew so that new revelation of all revelation might bring peace into this world in a dramatic way that will usher in the kingdom age so that it'll be like Eden ahead of one and all of us. So the most exciting time of the dove of love when the most regal eagle of the eons were soaring high with both of them together than we've ever imagined. And in these days of the lion and the lamb beginning to lay down, that it came to pass that a reflection came unto me, the messenger unto uh, Israel, that they have inherited all mankind, Isaiah 54, 3, because my job is to, has been to restore all things through understanding so that we don't have looking through a glass darkly no more, only understanding in part so that we can shine as the stars. And it came to pass that Habakkuk the prophet stood most tall during his prophetic watch, and the Lord set him upon a great spiritual tower to behold the grand vision of the climax of the ages that would come forth in the incredible latter-day days of Daniel 12. Uh, when the latter day Daniel would come, Daniel 12, 13, in the days of the shattering of the power of the holy people, Daniel 12, 7, uh, just opening canons and spirituality uh, blazing because of this. And then it would happen because God's word was only closed until the time of the end, says so, Daniel 12, 9. And praise the Lord that uh, now knowledge of the Lord's glory shall cover the earth as waters cover the sea, as grass cover the land, as sands cover the deserts, even as sand, snow covers the mountain tops. And that prophet of the Most High's greatest honor suddenly beheld his forthcoming glorious season uh, that would come forth in the in the future when the Lord would be pouring out his resplendence uh, as a flood upon the earth uh, and it's clear as a most tear tearful uh, joyful tears of happiness imaginable that such a fantastic revival of love can shake the earth senseless it's a cloaked time of spiritual growth none of us absolutely not one of us ever if we do not leave our comfort zone, we have not even yet begun to live. So know well that on planet Earth, there has never been any true love whatsoever divine unless it was unconditional. How could it be? And love from love, hope from hope, embrace it and let it be his warmth covering you as a blanket. And by the shining of the spirit of revelation, Habakkuk also foresaw that such a wonderful season of our Lord's most wonderful enlightenment, uh, he, he saw that it would also additionally become unwelcome days of reckoning for Satan because of his removal of Daniel 12, 1, because when God gives the covenant, automatically Satan had to be removed or else Satan would have made him a liar because day and night Satan was before the God as the accuser of the brethren telling God all about our sin. Bible says so, uh, Job, in the book of Job. And so is it that now that God has given the covenant, he had to get rid of, uh, had Michael, uh, the archangel, Daniel 12, 1, he hogtied that guy. Iblis, Satan, is not on earth anymore, and everyone has uh, obsolete uh, religion unless they gain understanding. Paul foretold that in Daniel, uh, in uh, Hebrews 8. He said, when those words come, I will be your God, you will be my people. I will forgive your iniquity. I will never remember, God says, 
to all of us. It is written, Jeremiah 31, 33 to 35. And the God says, and I, and I will write my law and my love upon your hearts. Beyond that, no one shall ever need to be even taught of me, for all people shall know me, from the least to the greatest. And absolutely all of us have, even if we become atheists down the road. It doesn't matter because all those who love are born again and born of God and know God because God is love. And 1 John 4, 7, and so is it true that every one of us have had our love flowing, but then we get on the path of the unforgivable blasphemy of the Holy Spirit. We're like a, a, a frog in a hot water slowly cooking if we don't get off the road of lovelessness, turn around and rescue hope and let hope rescue us because we need to move forward. So fake it till you make it. If you go two steps forward, one step back, you're still going in the right direction, but smiling is a good way to start. And the very truth is that a smile and kindness is a language that everyone can understand. The, 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 the deaf and the dumb and uh, the blind, they can even understand it because they can hear it in people's voice. If someone is smiling at you, you can just kind of hear it. And so these are the days for uh, to know that the evil powers of Satan has been removed and now all that's left on earth is leaderless imps. Strike the shepherd and the, the stupid sheep will scatter. And so uh, there's not going to be a lot of opposition against he who is our great white horseman of Revelation 6. And he goes forward on the horse uh, to conquer and overcome the black, the speckled, and the red. His love moving through us. And it is written, and the Lord says, uh, it is written in the word of God in Jeremiah 30, 24. This will be considered in the latter days. Thus saith the Lord God, I shall return my terrifying anger and stop the fast rising great tribulation if my people will give me the desire of my heart that I prayed for in Gethsemane. The brotherhood of love that he prophesied in John 10, that he would arise as the good shepherd over all the flocks of man. And all people are not willing to uh, embrace that which would bring peace and that which lifts up his love and his hope and his kingdom. God has a present for them. He foretells that if people will not accept his preparation of his most perfect peace, sent as his message of Malachi 3, 1 in the world to bring his peace, which is the kingdom age covenant, uh, sent to tear everything down, Jeremiah 1, 10. Haggai 2, 2, I am the strong and mighty one uh, with the appointment of Jeremiah in my mouth to be a destroying storm, to pull down the kingdom age veil that has held us captive so we can all get along in the sandbox, people. It's time to quit throwing sand and it's time to understand we are angels in the flesh. We are angels. And these are the days when it shall come to understand uh, the wise will see that God's righteous people will always be disappointed in the remarkable time of grace's completion as it fulfills its own destiny. And everyone is disappointed because if they've heard me, they've rejected me right off the bat real quick because it doesn't tickle their ears. It destroys what they have believed, and it brings forth the truth that the Lord God has never been a respecter of anyone, that he's loved us all exactly equally the same, and that all of our religion has been desolate heritage, as Isaiah 49, 8 foretold that, because it only reveals that we've been arguing about love for thousands of years, because at the end of the day, in the vineyard of God, all received this, the, 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 the same wage. And at the end of the day, all, all sin is forgiven, all of us. Jesus said so, even sin against him. So if you want to believe that not believing in Jesus is a sin, he said that even sin against himself would be forgiven people. And he meant what he says, and he said what he meant. And what he said is all sin will be forgiven except the unforgivable sin. Problem is people haven't known what that is. And then the, the everlasting gospel was switched. The, the younger brother Jacob stole Esau, the older brother uh, his blessing from a blind father and it slipped by. In the same way, uh, it slipped by again because Christianity, they assumed Israel's identity and they said we are Israel and they stole the Kingdom Age covenant. They've been standing on it wrongly for 2,000 years. And I am the messenger of the covenant. I preached it forth 
5,000 times already. I know it inside out, outside back. Look it up. But praise God that these are the days when the Lord is bringing forth a, a, a seasonal wonder. And even though our Lord God's most accurate through his spirit of prophecy, Habakkuk back in those days, he then abruptly foresaw that the dreaded day of the Lord could be preceded and altered and changed by many amazing ones that would be bringing forth some splendid times of wonder because uh, he came to see the prophecy was not told to tell the future but to change it and that Jonah 3 proved that God changes his mind because God did not destroy Nineveh. That he relented and if people will give the Lord, our Jesus Christ Almighty, the risen Lamb of God, Emmanuel, God in the flesh, he was not a son of God, he was God in the flesh. Yes, he was the son of God, that was his name. But mercury is mercury in two or three pieces. It's still mercury, whether it's apart or together, and so is it with Elohim. Our, the singularity of the plurality of Elohim, the many, so it's time to quit being like Lilliputians, arguing over what end of the uh, egg to open. Uh, potato, potato, people. It's time to get along with a multitude of liberating days of spiritual unity that Habakkuk foresaw, which would cause all of Earth's man-made religions to be abandoned like some bad news by everyone loving to hug onto truth as tightly as their pillows. For in these days, the wheat and the tares cannot grow together. The wheat will come with me and they'll go out from the safety of the shore and they will seek the priceless pearl of great reward, Christ Jesus, and the ocean of his love that's being expressed here at this channel. And they will go out and see him because he is the treasure of excellence and the excellence of treasure. And he wants to shine within you. This is the latter-day mountain of Isaiah 2 and Micah 4, the mountain of spiritual food of Isaiah 25. This is what Christ foretold in Isaiah, uh, Matthew 24, excuse me, when he asked who will come and feed the master's household meat while the master is away. It was his Elijah task servant, his latter-day Daniel, same guy as Joshua, Zechariah 3, same guy as the alcoholic Shiloh, Genesis 49, 12. I am the messenger from the north of Isaiah 41. So praise the Lord. It's time that he saw Habakkuk, a window to the day of glory. And then he saw that the resplendence of God's love would be overflowing this world, even in spite of the trial of all flesh, COVID, that's come to bring God's word of patience to keep us from the hour of the temptation not to change. And it came to pass that the Lord then allowed Habakkuk to comprehend that would even become marvelous days ahead when iron would be transformed into the steel and steel would be changing into gold within the eternal spiritual refiner's fire of the Most High's love in the ocean of his adoration, which could never possibly pass away. It is bottomless. And he saw that the greatest glory of our returning Messiah, Emmanuel, Isa Yeshua, Jesus, the living word of God would come forth ever so mightily before the earth's final incineration that will happen, metaphorical or literal, depending on what we do. Because prophecy of the destruction and total oblivion of earth of Malachi 4, 6, Deuteronomy 18, 18, Matthew 24, 22, Zephaniah 1, 1, Deuteronomy 18, 18. If you look them up, it's all total destruction. Jesus said that unless his word came forth anew, his, the second coming of his word opening, that no flesh could be saved. There is no way to cut time short. He said time had to be cut short. Unless time was cut short, no flesh could be saved. Only God's word could cut time short. So know that this is the last regeneration that will cause peace to come forth for the next thousand years. And so was it that the unveiled word of the Lord then answered Habakkuk the prophet by telling him that his breathtaking seeing in the spirit would be an appointed future time that it would come forth at the end. But he also strongly stressed that his vision of prophecy 
to come would also be speaking truthfully during the earth's latter days and would never possibly lie. God promises, surely the vision was written for the appointed time at the end, and at the end it shall come. You can behold, he whose soul is not upright, but the just shall live by his faith, even though he's transgressed by wine, because he shall be as hell and shall never be satisfied, as he embraces all people of the earth unto himself for the risen good shepherd over all the flocks of man, Isa Yeshua, Jesus. And then it came to pass that the Lord God allowed the mysterious puzzle of his honored latter-day session of utter finality to become shrouded over by his quickened word of astonishment unto Habakkuk the prophet. And man, it was exciting. The door opened. It was a time to encourage. And God's word is wanting to bring forth his timeless word of wisdom. And his message was always cloaked. So then it came to pass in uh, my revelation of revelation that our Almighty Lord God stressed that even though his dove of love's most wondrous time of miraculous wonders would be tearing, he guaranteed in Habakkuk that worshipers would always have to wait most patiently for it, uh, and that it would take a time, times and a half a time, once the vision came for the shattering of the power of the holy people, and that not by power nor by might, but by the spirit of love would this happen. And it would be the most incredible power of love uh, moving again on planet Earth. It's like we're being jump-started from up above with God's unconditional ocean of his love gushing fountains of his benevolence. It's like rapids of his beneficence and his magnificence. For Christ the Lord stands as our beloved love, and he will have his way in the storm of our unloving ways and our ignorance of love as we choose the ways of selfishness day after day after day. I don't want to be selfish. I'm preaching to a world of selfish people. And I, don't, I want you to be like me. I'm, I'm preaching day after day to nobody. Day after day. I got no subscribers. No one wants my good news. But it's the very, very best good news on earth. That's why I will not stop. And that's why God has picked me. So be dogmatic. Be uh, stubborn. Uh, stay on the path of love if you're there. And if you're not there, repent of your unloving ways and come and sit around. Keep me uh, company a little bit. Leave me a message. Say hi. Give me a like. No one gives me no I never get no like. So praise the Lord that all of this was coming forth mightily like a whirlwind of the greatest manifested joy unto me and unto Habakkuk when he first saw. And the Lord's happiness therefore comes forth at this time. And know that even before creation came forth uh, for, for the exciting end time peak of the Lord God's highest praises, it was always fated that they would come forth like a flowing flood of the finest honor for him so that his glory would cover this earth. And for that golden season shall also be the crowning zenith of his greatest earthly exaltation ever witnessed by any mortal men. I am Daniel, the, the messenger. I'm not the end time prophet. The end time prophet was all the rest of the Hebrew prophets. Jeremiah, the king of them all, for writing the everlasting kingdom age covenant that will bring peace. We must beat our sword into the sickle upon this latter day mountain of videos. There's never been another latter day mountain ever in recorded history, people. This is the latter day mountain that was foretold. And you will be able to come and have dinner here, the mountain of food of Isaiah 25, where God will remove all all uh, guilt and shame from mankind. And even though things may seem pretty slow in coming forth, the Lord said, wait just a little longer, O passionate people of obedience, and praise your Lord, it will come. And those days of love w won't keep delaying. And, and at that, for that reason, Jesus Christ said that there would be some fearful events along with some great signs from heaven. And it's time that we understand that the most ironic thing that the Bible foretold 
prior to its greatest prophecy being lost in some bad translations was that the just would come to live by the faith of a drinking prophet who I, Daniel F. Owsley, am. I am the alcoholic. I mean, when I was uh, 16, I had a bag of glue glued to my face, and I would have died had God not had his hand upon me. And so he saved my life, and I've given him mine. And I am a slave to the great white throne. I am Elijah. I've known my identity since I was uh, a young man, 30 years old. A prophet got a hold of me and said, hey, here you are in the Bible. He pointed to the arrow of God who would have a sharp tongue. And I could see that in myself only because I had sold uh, credit cards as a representative, easily walked up to one million people, one on one on one. I can talk. And Christ needed the arrow as that foretelling of Elijah, uh, Isaiah 49, that Elijah would be Christ's arrow that Christ will use as the great white horseman because Satan's been removed and Christ has not much opposition. It's his love moving through us. The kingdom of God is within us already if we will just stop ignoring it and stop ignoring the messenger of love who's bringing the message. So let the just live by my faith, the kingdom age faith that God is making a way where it has seemed to be there's no no way. And do not think that God is coming to tear down all our religion and uh, leave us. It's prophesied that God's word will arise as a, a, a brotherhood of love all over this circle of earth. It'll be like Lily of the Valleys and uh, Rose of Sharon all over this globe. So God will always replace something with something better and but within two more years people you watch ignore me if you want but i'm gonna have the last laugh muhammad mahatma gandhi said first when you have a true message first they ignore you then they mock you and then you win and that's exactly what happened with alexander the great he was shown by nathan the prophet himself in the word of god here you are uh, the king of Greece and you will be undefeated look what happened there and the same thing happened to me it was shown that Christ is going to win this world for his love and that every knee will bow unto love and every tongue will confess love whom he alone is residing in our heart if we commit not blasphemy of the Holy Spirit so light your candle of love it is the candle of hope, and it's time to turn over new leaves and to move our, our dead love into being unconditional for one and all. And uh, it starts with just a smile. If you can do that, you can begin. Love from love. Until next time, I am the messenger of the north of Isaiah 41.